Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Norma Jean Kiefer. She is the owner of SOS Interactive in Baltimore, and she helps businesses with websites or no website improve online visibility, page ranking, and ultimately improve lead generation with a variety of online marketing strategies, not limited to just search engine optimization. Uh, She has extensive experience with not only digital marketing, but has an award-winning advertising representative for many publishers, including the Miami Herald, Cygnus Business Media, and Verizon Superpages. Norma, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you for having me. Well, I gave a little introduction there, but give us a little bit more. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you started SOS Interactive. Well, as uh, you just mentioned, I have an extensive background with advertising, um, really starting off in the print um, business um, with Miami Herald, as a matter of fact. But um, as you know, in the past few years, probably within the last 10 years, um, with the advent of the internet and the growth of the internet, um, print had um, seen its day and it sort of started a, a slow bleed, as they call, um, and uh, print was trying to find options to uh, save their revenues. Well, I got into um, the internet, um, sort of, a, it was a two-way street, but I got into it, um, one with working with Verizon Super Pages when um, these yellow page publishers were trying to find ways, again, to uh, stave off this uh, bleed of uh, losing print and trying to uh, morph into the digital uh, space. So I learned very quickly about websites and um, selling online advertising and using a background of advertising, not just with Miami Herald, which is selling print newspaper, but also with selling yellow pages. So I had a, an extensive background with that. But my days of going into um, to my on my own actually uh, was because I um, was self-taught um, because I was a, actually a, another business owner with a small franchise in the state of Maryland with uh, a partner. And we just bought this small franchise that relied on directory. It was a big database that was built. And even though it was built by um, a guru who built the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac uh, platform to uh, process that information, the information, um, the websites that we bought, which is part of our franchise, wasn't uh, very well uh, working very well. So I actually had to learn HTML and learn SEO and all these different things. So it was sort of like a fast track, put on my advertising experience, learn how to do internet and website and do all these things and trying to run this business. As it turned out in this franchise world, which was called digital sports, which was managing um, data for high schools. Our franchise happened to be in the city in the state of Maryland. Um, I, my expertise was just advertising and being able to do internet and all these different things that I'd learned had made us, um, the most successful franchise or a franchisee in the state of Maryland, actually in the whole footprint for digital sports. And, um, needless to say, long story short, we ended up not, um, completing the, um, business of SEO or uh, completing that business because it, we ended up getting bought out because the franchise, um, was failing a little bit. And we just got bought out and they wanted to use whatever experience I had and how my expertise was helping out. I go back into Yellow Page and I started working for Yellow Book, which was the competitor for Verizon. And they hired me on as being their very first internet person that they ever hired. And again, to help help stave off this bleed of losing print and trying to morph pa- uh, customers who are paying for print into the internet. And I ended up becoming... Um, their first sales rep, I was like a, a model for growing their internet department for, for Yellow Book. Um, and then, the, as, as you know now, uh, Yellow Book is now called Haibu, which is when Yellow Book started, to, you know, they just started losing ground with being just Yellow Pages. And they go, what happens with Yellow Pages? Well, as you know, most people don't pay for it anymore because they're online and most people are doing direct searches and whatnot. So that was a fast moving train. But I had a boss who was 
pretty jealous of my, I guess, my knowledge of internet. How do I more customers? How do I keep customers and whatever? And one day he said to me, so if you're so good at what you do, why aren't you doing this on your own? And I said, you know what? You're right. So I just basically um, took left Yellow Book, took clients with me. Yellow Book wasn't very happy about it. And, um, but the problem was Yellow Book wasn't, wasn't able to provide the, the services in the internet world that they can now, but back then they couldn't. So my clients followed me. I didn't, you know, didn't uh, mess with yeah, print at all. I just went straight to the internet and started building website optimization and, uh, and I've been doing it for like nine years now. So that's how it started. Right. Well, congratulations on uh, starting out your own business. And uh, what a great question your boss asked you, <laughs> you know, uh, got you to take action and go out on your own. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So tell me about the clients that you serve now. Is it mostly in, in the local business like you were with uh, Yellow Book and Super Pages? Well, so... Um, the, the, the real cool thing about being in Yellow Pages was, was the fact that I was able to um, be exposed to many different types of businesses, everything from manufacturing to, you know, B2C, business to consumer and business to business. So um, I actually had walked away with a whole myri- myriad of different types of clients that um, I had experience in doing all, the whole uh, range of um, types of clients. Mostly the client that um, I would get would be a client who was minimally knowledgeable about internet, had no idea about the internet. In fact, many of the clients were like, I have no idea what's going on here. And in fact, my trying to explain it and try to dumb down the explanation of what the internet and what search engine optimization and how good websites should work actually overwhelmed many clients because they just were not knowledgeable of how this worked. They were minimally and they knew they needed it, but they just didn't have that knowledge. So I had to learn how to talk to clients who have minimal knowledge and how to you know, which also was part of my success with Yellow Book and Yellow Pages in general was being able to explain how this works, how their websites work, how their websites work, and how it correlates to lead capture and building their business. We want to manage the business all together, so it was a it was um, a transition for me. But I but I was able to put the message across to clients, and that's how I kept them. I still have clients to this day that I that came with me to this day nine years later. So. That's how it was successful. Well, that's good. They don't stay around if they're not seeing results. So you must be getting results for them. But, you know, how have things changed from, you know, I remember getting phone calls all the time from Yellow Pages and Yellow Book and Super Pages and everybody trying to, you know, sell space on their websites. Does Is that still working or has things moved on since then? It, it still does, actually. In fact, that's probably one of the biggest issues that I, I still run across, as a, you know, competitively wise, is that um, I'll get. And in fact, in this recent situation, I just had a client who who was balking a little bit. I mean, I've had them since the time I had from Verizon. Believe it or not, I mean, I, I went from Verizon Yellow Book, and I've had clients that I've known them for many, many years. And he's, you know, explaining to me, "Oh, Hibu has this new program." Da da da. And I was like, "Well." They still automate. They still don't have expert trained people like me. I'm expert trained. I'm SEO, um, search engine uh, marketing professional with Sempo, um, web CEO trained. That, you know, the, these folks that they hire are just representatives who they hire. They're there. They're on commission. They work on commission and and they write out and they do these random reports. And I, I my, my clients now sort of joke around and send me these emails. going, look at this email I got trying to get you know, a report that says you're not on first page results. Well, they don't know that because unless they do an actual uh, comprehensive report, they don't know what my client's goals are. And that's the whole point about why you want to speak to someone like me, because I will find out what are your goals, what are your most important keywords, who your competitors are, run the reports, find out where they are in that in that area where they need to be compared to their competitors. And someone's getting a random email saying, you're not on first page based on what they don't know they just start they're just doing blanketed emails and hopefully somebody will bite the hook so that's you're right that doesn't happen all the time right that's uh definitely a numbers game with a, a bit of a scare tactic in there uh, many times um but yep. I, I guess it must work for them because they keep on calling <laughs> 
Well, again, they do. Um, and and also, I probably I feel like I'm a little bit of a target sometimes because some you know I've taken some. I have some of the bigger clients in Baltimore, so I think I'm a target. <laughs> And I don't have a problem advertising and letting people know that I'm the one who's doing this, this client's marketing or their SEO because if they see them in first, you know, I would say always in first position, but on the first page or in a very prominent position on ranking keywords that are ma that matter, then they're going to gun for me. So I, I see that happen mm -hmm. all the time. So it just doesn't happen all the time. So it's visibility. Is that the main problem that uh, the companies that you deal with have? Um, no, actually, it's not. Visibility is one thing, but then it's it's one thing if they're found. But the other problem could be is once the person a client lands on a landing page, which could be any page of a website, then they might have a problem with actionability, meaning how's that page laid out. So I don't just do the SEO side. I also make sure that that client or customers react or, or do an action. So it's not just visibility, but it's it's. How can they be contacted to get the right information? And when they contact them, what happens once a form is received? Because that's another big thing I do is making sure forms and contact information and other th things work. Because sometimes clients get forms and they don't respond quickly. Or I mean, I can pick out gaps in areas where I can, you know, a client will say, I'm not getting any any leads and like but you are getting leads you're just not responding to them or maybe you're not getting them on top whatever the case may be but there's sometimes you can find out issues down the road so it's not about it visibility yes but then how do they find it like what do they do after the point so it's to be message navigation it's all sorts of things what's you know that that it goes beyond just the, uh, the visibility mm. so let's talk about the the conversion part once they land on the website because there are still those uh, people that get word of mouth referrals which is still a huge part of marketing but they're yeah. still sending people to the website so conversion is probably the most important part uh, there talk to me about what things that you can put on the website that is going to make them take action uh, and pick up the phone or fill up, uh, fill out a form and get in contact somehow. Well, I, a good good example is um, well, first of all, I'll just explain that you have different types of clients or, or customers anyway. So some customers are going to go to a website and they're strictly looking for that information of a phone number. So you need to make sure number one, phone number is brightly and is easily visible. That's the number one issue there. And number two, um, to collect data, a form. Is very important so you need to have some sort of form and i you know since i use wordpress a lot we we try to use um uh, wordpress forms with some sort of hook like zapier or something that manages and, and measures the uh the, the path that these uh, people take so um but sometimes having an offer like free download um something that helps collect the information because this information will be used later on down the road. Not just, it might not, they might not be a lead right away, but they could be a lead down the road as well. So everything I do is try, tries to collect information about who's visiting the website. Um, and if the client is just getting email contact, meaning they're just responding to an email link, then also that information is set up in a way that that client can also collect that information. But we definitely try to make an offer or some way of, you know, getting the client to, to, to act. But it, you just have to appeal to how, how people uh, or clients um, are going to uh, kind of mm. are going to um, um, contact you. And, and as far as the messaging on the website, do you give mm -hmm. advice on, you know, what's best to say and also the, the follow up part with a, an email sequence? Yes. Well, first of all, I'm a big believer in in images so um i've done so much like if you, if you know what a heat map is but if you look at the way many clients go to websites so you have 50 percent of people respond to words and and verbiage and content and you have another 50 who do images so it's very important to have a good mix of images slash content because what's what you're getting it are people who do who make rash decisions or make uh, an important decision right away based on images and sometimes you just have to have the right photos, right graphics with the right words, and then followed by a button to contact here, get get a quote here, and different ways of persuading someone to act on it. So images to me are the most important with some sort of very, very blunt 
quick message that gets them to act on it right away. So that, that to me is most, but you will see that many, many people, and I, I put heat maps on websites a lot of times and see that 50% of people click on an image that's linked and the other 50% are clicking on that content that's linked. So, and it's interesting to see, but that's you have to have both. Mm. How long generally is a person going to stay on a website before they click off or try and find uh, something else? Well, first of all, everybody, well, I don't say everybody knows, but I, I do say this all the time. You have five seconds to make a good first impression. So that's very, very important that all that information gets put above the fold. That means, you know, a good image good content, contact information. So generally speaking, if someone goes to a website and they don't see what they want, guess what? They're off within five, five to six seconds. And so very important to make sure that you put at least the most key information with a couple of blurbs that people can catch. It's it's a big bell. If your website above the fold is like a big billboard. You must must be able to make the point very quickly or they're gonna leave. Right, there's not much you can read in five seconds. So any uh, kind of written right. content needs to be below the fold once that you've piqued their interest. Right, and a, a very compelling image that speaks loudly. Because believe it or not, images, you know, you know, words, um, you know, uh, an image is worth a thousand words. So that is very important. So I, I'm constantly looking for the right images. It's another big, big thing I do for, for my clients a lot of times is the right image with the right content. So talk to me about uh, the traffic generation then, because that's kind of uh, the other half of it. How do you get traffic to these local business websites or small business websites? So, you, so there's a there's a ba- there's a basic strategy that I have, and it depends on how or where the clients are marketing. So in a lot of ways, I have many clients who not just market to one geographical area. And we'll use Baltimore for example. And you, it's easy to say, I'll, I'll say Plumber Baltimore. So it's great to say Plumber Baltimore, except that Plumber Baltimore as a keyword or a phrase is um, most popular. However, our biggest challenge really is the actual search engine, Google the search engine. However, there are other ways that draw traffic, and that is to geo-target websites or landing pages to various particular areas in a market. Because in Baltimore, it's surrounded by counties like Power County, Harper County, Carroll County, and Arona County, but it also has communities that are very popular as well, like Glen Burnie. So if a client's looking, which usually is one of my target clients, is a client that has a limited budget and doesn't want to spend a lot of money on pay-per-click, which is PPC through Google AdWords or Facebook, then the best way to do it is to break down someone's website into these markets, into micro-market, or we call micro-landing pages, or many, many names for them. But what basically what you do is you have to break it down so that it's easily found when it's queried in this geo-targeted market. Now, PPC does play a big portion in it, but there are ways to save money on pay-per-click and having to bring leads. So there's there's a, many channels on bringing leads. And then there's a third portion of it, because I just mentioned geo-targeted landing pages, PPC, there's also social media. So you cannot discount the, the social media, which is also part of a strategy they use because social media is very big um, in not only just bringing traffic, but it helps with ranking because the Google, like for example, Google now uses it as a ranking factor in um, how traffic comes to your website and if traffic does come to your website. So if your client's not doing any form of social media whatsoever, then they're only hurting themselves in a big way. Hmm. Yeah, let's talk about some of the misconceptions. Uh, one that I've heard is, you know, social media traffic doesn't really convert. That's, well, who, who, I, I disagree with that one 100%. It depends on what in, industry you're in. Um, you, you, what's, you, you had just mentioned earlier that referrals are a big portion of how traffic comes to you. Well, social media is one of the number one reasons why referrals come, come over. Um, I, I, you can go on to Facebook right now and you see someone going, oh, so tell me, who would you recommend as a roofer? And the next thing you know, you, if you're, let's say you're friends with a certain roofer, and they recommend it, then you, you're you right there getting a referral via social media. So that that's very important. That's, people are just, people just want to do that. And that's their community 
And it's very important to have and be on there so that you're in in their uh, in their purview when they're looking for that particular type of recommendation. So you need to do both. Now, mm-hmm. if you're a business to business scenario, then LinkedIn is a very important um, medium or social media medium uh, to get into because that brings you that right target audience, and many clients want that type of market as well. So, I, I personally believe that you need to be everywhere. It's a door to your website. It's a link, and it matters. So I, I, I that, that's just part of everything I do. I set up my clients up for all social media, and it's integrated. It's it's just built that way. Right, and that's the difference, uh, I guess, between just having an SEO doing specific work for you and a digital marketing company that incorporates all these different aspects of uh, digital marketing to make them all work together. Well, you're correct about that. So, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I'll, I will, I'll kind of give you that analogy. I usually tell clients, I, I, I usually get hired by somebody who has either just built a website and they hired someone else to build a website or they have had a website on like a, uh, you know, one of the portals like Wix or Foursquare or something, or even on Haibu, and, um, or, and someone's built their website years ago using some old antiquated platform, you know, um, or, or however the case may be. But what happens is I explained that the, what the SEO is never built into, because most people they hire are just simply website builders or graphic artists, but they don't understand SEO. I'm trained. I've been doing this for years and years and years. Simple trained. And I actually do build the website and I build the website with the SEO already in it. Like it's, it, the analogy is, is like building a house. You don't build a home without electrical wiring, but that's what many of these website builders do. They build a home without or building a website without this, these electrical or these connections with SEO and optimization. Let's call optimization the, the, uh, the uh, word that will collaborate with um, electrical. The point is it's not built that way. So I end up getting brought in to put in the electrical wires after the house has been built. And no one builds a house without electrical wires because once you turn the electricity on, you want, you want it to work. So that, that's many that's many of my clients. That's actually most of my clients. That is a very good analogy, a great way to picture it and to think about it. If it's not done right the first time, it takes a lot more work, a lot of extra work to go back in and try and fix that problem. Oh, you, oh yes. I, oh my goodness. You have no idea. I tell clients all the time, like if you, and not to stick with it, stay with it for a long period of time. I think we were talking about misconceptions. Well, misconceptions is it's a quick fix. It's not. There's some things, yes, that can be done to help with raising rankings and, and, and visibility, but this is a, an investment in the visibility of a website. You buy SEO, you do it for a while. You can't just do it for two or three months. It doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about uh, the results. How do you measure results? Uh, what kind of data are you analyzing? So I actually use several different platforms to manage, measure, monitor results in progress, and as well to implement any corrective actions, especially if I see any trends. Because unfortunately, Google is a complete, you know, obviously, you know, Google is a sandbox, and they're always updating some algorithm or some platform or something that causes some issue with SEO. But far less with Bing or Yahoo, but way, way, I'm always on my toes with Google. So I use um, Web CEO, which is my go-to platform for measuring ranking and page ranking, and then measure links to a website. Now I can also do competitive reports with their with their my clients with competitors, and I actually can keep a running tally. So I can benchmark from the very first day I start a client to the time that you know three or four months later, and you can actually see these trends or progress. Sometimes you may see, you know, fall back, but that's again, because the website, uh, the uh, internet so fluid and things are changing. And again, you don't know what your competitors are. And someone may have just hired an SEO person as well. And some variable has happened. But um, I also use Google Analytics. Google Analytics is the gold standard here for um, measuring clients, um, traffic, websites, and keywords. And also part of every website, not just Google Analytics, but you also have to have it hooked up to your Google um, Google search plat- uh, search uh, console and Bing and Yahoo. Don't discount 
the, the value between being in Yahoo and being has a webmaster uh, dashboard as well, which I also use in order to measure and monitor the, you know, the trends. And so I, I can tell very quickly by looking at someone's website, what's going on. And then of course, you know, I screenshot and make sure I match up the information and it's very accurate. So, um, and then once it's zoom in, I may have to use some, you know, other, uh, you know, cloud-based product to, you know, some one of my clients may need some information, competitive information like SciFu or something like that that I might have to use that's offline. And that's fine. I, I use I did different things. It depends on what my client wants to see. Most of them don't want to see it. They just want to see more leads. <laughs> but they don't yeah. want to see all that I do. <laughs> Right, of course, uh, you know, they want to make sure things are working, but uh, many times the way they judge that is is the phone ringing or are they booking new business? They don't really necessarily want to know all the, the data and everything that's going on in the background. That's correct. They, they, I, I send them a report and I, I look at them and I go, you know, do you understand the report? Uh, they, I you inevitably have to interpret the report because sometimes, you know, interpretation of analytics versus, you know, um, is it, it has to be done because otherwise the client loses sight of why they hired me in the first place. So if I don't have to explain it. So. so obviously having somebody trained to do your SEO and take over your whole digital marketing campaign is going to produce better results. Uh, but what do you feel holds some companies back from taking that first step? One, Price to commitment, just as I explained before, um, depends on a client's um, goals and, and market area. So if it's a small geographic market area and it's like, let's say somebody who does business within a five mile radius and they're just looking to get business, maybe expand business in a county, let's say Howard County. And they're like, you know, I, and I can do analysis real fast to say, well, you're, do, you're doing really well with plumbing Howard County. However, you do electrical, but we need to work on that part of it. Well, competition in the electrical side in that county might be a little bit high. It might not take you very long. But the cost for doing that small geographic area isn't going to be so bad unless, of course, they say, I need to do the whole state of Maryland, and they're trying to branch out. Well, now we're talking about a bigger, you know, a lot more effort and a lot more monitoring and a lot more stuff that has to be done. And then you're, you're, you're going maybe from $500 a month to now $1,500 a month. And then... Um, I have to tell them you have to do at least three months to see any sort of traction in, in results in progress. And then it's like, you know, I call it the windmill factor. It's, it's once we get it up to the first page that, you know, it, then, then certain things feed into it. So like the wind starts flying, that, that windmill starts to turn a little bit. Um, but sometimes you, you have to give it a little push to keep the windmill still turning. But once it starts to generate, it, it sometimes will stay there, but you still have a little, you know, you still need me in the game to keep track of what's going on because your competitive, these things are constantly changing. So, mm, Yeah, that's uh, another good analogy if, if when you're thinking of that windsurf and once that wind picks up, it's great to, you know, get that momentum behind you, but you still need to make those little adjustments yep. uh, in order to make sure you're you're picking up that wind. I like that one. And every um, once in a while, you have a client, you, you may have a competitor who has just hired someone like me. And then all of a sudden, their efforts have been, in, you know, have been um, escalated. And then I find myself competing with one of their competitors that wasn't there maybe a month ago. Mm -hmm. And so the effort has to change or the strategy changes a little bit. So, yeah, that, that's why I'm, I'm not a short term um, SEO or hiring me is not a short term investment, it's a long term investment. Excellent. Well, give me an example of, uh, I know you've had people with you for nine years, but give me an example of, uh, you know, what kind of problems somebody had before coming to you, what you were able to do for them, and ultimately, what's the outcome? Has it changed their business and their lives? Well, perfect. I have the perfect one. So a lot of times, um, I also get uh, approached by clients who had... Um, the um they'll have a what i call an unscrupulous seo person and that would be somebody where they're they a client will not have access to their website files they have access to the admin and they don't have access to their hosting account and then all of a sudden the the client goes to this 
SEO person they have on target or have on hire and says, you know what, I want to try something different. And guess what the SEO person does? They take their site down. And now all of a sudden this poor client has no website whatsoever. And they're freaking out because they're a business that relies heavily on the internet. And I just had this happen a couple of years ago to a plumber, very big plumber, who was had hired this SEO person who had, con- who had control over everything, including the domain name. They didn't even own the domain name. The domain name, when it was all set up, wasn't even owned by a client. This poor client hires me. I was referred to them by someone else. And this client came to me and said, what can you do to help me? And I said, well, you go back to um, the history. If you go to a uh, way back machine and you check out what the website might have looked at, because um, they, they do uh, index and cache some of these website pages. I looked at the website and I said, I can have you up and running in about two or three days. And um, almost everything pretty much looking the same. We just have to set up new hosting and new everything. So basically, um, he hired me to recreate the website that was taken down on a different domain name because I actually told him it won't matter the domain name because I I, it, I can actually get it optimized faster on a new domain name anyway than if you use the old one and just get it done. And sure enough, in, in less than a week, I had this client restored back to the internet, all his information, most of the images, everything that was lost because this inscrupulous SEO person took them down. And, and I set up clients on their own hosting, their own third party, who's I can't host, but I do set them up third party for the very reason. If for some reason someone's unhappy with me and they don't want to work with me anymore, here's your logins, here's your stuff. They're, they're theirs. But I always advise clients, they need to take control of their own information, including their own files in case something like this happens. So, um, and, and on top of that, um, got him up there in the first page under, um, he needed drain cleaning, he did drain cleaning specials and stuff like that. Got him very quickly further up the line than his own SEO person did or prior. So that, that's how I able to solve problems. Excellent. Well, great results. And, you know, I've heard so many of those stories when business owners don't control uh, their own properties and you know these nightmare stories unfortunately happen uh, often so that's one thing that you definitely need to look for when you are looking to hire uh, a digital marketer is make sure that you have control of everything that's correct um, exactly correct hmm. All right, Norma. Well, this has been really good. Some great information from you today. If uh, somebody wants to reach out for your expertise, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, they can do. They can come obviously to my website on um, on SOSinteractive.com, or you can do a Google search for me and Norma Jean Keeper. Come up. I'm I'm all over the place with that because um that's how um I I believe in marketing. Uh, granted, I you know I even joke about having business cards. But um, I do offer a free um, website analysis of the two competitors so that clients can see where there is improvement. Because sometimes clients sometimes don't even see the openings of where there is improvement. But for us, we, there is always room for improvement, website-wise and uh, competitively-wise. So, yes, so you can find me on SOS.com or look for Norma Jean Keeper. You'll find me. Well, very valuable resource there to be able to check out your competition and just see what improvements can be made for your business. And uh, that is at sosinteractive.com. Well, Norma Jean Kiefer, thank you very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio today. I've enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Well, I, hopefully I was well, good. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, enjoyed it myself as well. And to, I, talk about this. <laughs> I love it. I know. I definitely love to talk about it. It's a it's a great niche. Um, you know, digital marketers, SEOs, really help people drive business. So uh, I do love to talk to uh, people that help business owners uh, generate that income, and you certainly do that. So thanks again. Well, thank you so much. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com to get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor. 
go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.